the wrongs that we tend to believe as truths about A1C. A lot of people think that they know everything about A1C levels and how to control it. But the fact is that many diabetics are misinformed about this topic. Have you downloaded the SugarMD app yet? If not, you are missing out on some great resources for managing your diabetes. Our team of experts offer free coaching via app texting so you can get answers to all of your diet and diabetes related questions. Plus, using the app daily will help you stay on track and help make healthy choices. So, download the app today. Start living your best life. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter for weekly educational emails as well. In this video, I am going to dispel some of the myths that you think that there are facts about A1C levels. I hope that after watching this video, you'll be more informed about how to manage your diabetes and keep your A1C levels under control. A1C levels are often seen as the be all, the end all, when it comes to managing diabetes. However, there are a number of misconceptions about what these levels actually mean. For the starters, A1C levels are not a measure of blood sugar levels necessarily. Instead, actually, they reflect the average amount of glucose in the bloodstream over the past three months. This means that a high A1C level does not necessarily mean that the blood sugar levels have been high for the entire three month period. It can be high and that can affect your A1C at any time. If it is consistently high for three months, of course your A1C will be very high. The stress and illness can affect that, for example. And day to day blood sugar control may not be reflected in your A1C. So, as a result, it is important to interpret A1C levels in conjunction with other measures of diabetes control, such as daily blood sugar monitoring. Now, does normal A1C mean insulin resistance is gone? It's a common question, right? Or is, am I not diabetic anymore? My A1C is 5.5. A common misconception is that insulin resistance resolves when A1C is fully normal. This is not the case, unfortunately. Insulin resistance is a measure of how well your body can process sugar. And it's possible to have insulin resistance even if your A1C levels are completely normal. For example, you may have normal blood sugar levels before or after being diagnosed with diabetes, but you can still have a tremendous amount of insulin resistance. This is because insulin resistance is not simply a matter of high blood sugar levels. It is also affected by factors like the weight, your diet, your exercise. As such, insulin resistance cannot be resolved simply by returning your A1C levels to normal because A1C basically shows you the average blood sugar levels in the last three months. Instead, it requires a comprehensive approach for insulin resistance like lifestyle changes and some homeopathic treatments. Another misconception around A1C is this. People think A1C is the gold standard. Well, not at all. A1C is a measure of average blood sugar over the last three months. It gives you and your doctor a kind of a rough idea about how well your blood sugar control is, but it doesn't tell you about the details. The higher your A1C, the greater your risk of developing complications from diabetes, such as stroke, heart attack, and kidney disease, and nerve disease, and so forth, which is why knowing A1C is important, and that's what they use in studies, but it's not everything. So we always tell people, hey, keep your A1C below 7. However, A1C is still not a perfect measure. It's the simplest thing you can remember and do as a patient. It doesn't take into account the spikes and drops in your blood sugar levels. So your A1C may be 7% if your blood sugar is 50 and 250 and keep bouncing around like this, it will be 7%. That doesn't mean that you're doing a great job because you're bouncing between 50 and 250. So if you're a patient with A1C level of six, for example, but if your blood sugar can be ranging from 4 to 400, just like I said, what a 7% A1C, 
I'm not surprised that happens, especially with type 1 diabetics. But don't be too alarmed. Uh, some patients may need more aggressive treatment, more aggressive monitoring to make it more stable. And if your blood sugars are stable, the A1C becomes a more reliable measure for sure. So again, like I said, it's an overall good glucose control measure, but it is very rough. And there are certain circumstances that it's actually inaccurate. For example, if you have anemia or have recently received a blood transfusion, your A1C results may not be accurate. Additionally, if you are taking like iron pills, this can also affect your A1C results. So what is the best way to understand your glucose control if your A1C isn't always accurate? Well, monitoring your blood sugar via finger stick is the closest thing you can get to an accurate picture. Additionally, yes, CGMs like Dexcom or Freestyle Libre or Medtronic systems can also help support your monitoring efforts. But remember, CGMs do not necessarily provide exact real-time data. They are a little bit delayed, especially when your blood sugars are rapidly rising or dropping. But it is a great tool to be able to monitor and foresee what's happening with your blood sugars. Again, A1C is the most common and most convenient and the cheapest way for doctors to monitor their patients, but it's not always the most accurate. If you have conditions that make the A1C test not ideal for you, uh, there are some other options available actually. For example, you, you can ask your doctor for octosamine or glycomark tests or two alternatives that can be used to measure blood sugar levels. Now, if you're on an SGLT2 inhibitor, such as Jardians or Farsigo or Invokana, Glycomark will not work, and it will, I'm not going to get into detail why, but definitely don't ask your doctor to do that because it's going to look high if you're an SGLT2 inhibitor. So if you have concerns about the accuracy of your A1C test, again, just talk to your doctor about alternative testing, and make sure you're not anemic, make sure you do not have blood disorders, make sure you did not have any blood transfusion, and so forth. But the bottom line is, I think knowing what A1C is and A1C is not is going to be your ally when it comes to managing your diabetes. Well, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.